Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you with live continuous coverage of WWE's Monday Night Raw, which kicked off tonight with The Authority and Randy Orton inside of the ring. Uh, basically, The Authority welcoming Randy Orton back into the group, and in, in this induction, basically Randy Orton uh, basically running down every single member of The Authority to their face and telling Seth Rollins that he was going to kick his ass at any time that the time was right. At that moment, basically, Randy Orton uh, told everybody that he was joking and tried to laugh it off. And, uh, you know, basically, they said that tonight they were going to have a, a two-on-one main event uh, where hopefully we will finally see the RKO that we've all been longing for for so long. From there, we go to the opening match of the night, which was Daniel Bryan going up against Wade Barrett in a very, very good, awesome match. The only problem that I had with this match was that they hyped this match up like it was an Intercontinental Championship match. Match. Basically, the hashtag was IC title. They made you really think about it. I know that I should be paying more attention to the show. Daniel Bryan seems like he's going to be the last guy added to the Intercontinental Championship ladder match at WrestleMania 31 with, uh, uh, let's see, Dean Ambrose, R-Truth, Wade Barrett, Dolph Ziggler, Luke, uh, uh, <coughs> Luke Harper, um, and uh, Daniel Bryan himself going into the match. Uh, honestly, in my mind, I think Dean Ambrose has to be the uh, odds-on favorite to win this. But, uh, you know, Wade Barrett going up against Daniel Bryan is, is a great match. We saw these guys have a, a good little um, run in NXT. They had a good little um, series of matches when Daniel Bryan was the money in the bank, um, you know, uh, briefcase holder. Uh, you can remember the match they had at SummerSlam, a very, very good match that uh, Daniel Bryan lost to Wade Barrett. But in this match, Daniel Bryan came out on top. And we were, yes, 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 saying more than likely this will be his ticket to WrestleMania 31, where he was going to be added into the Intercontinental Championship uh, Battle Royal. <coughs> Tonight's going to be the night of coughs. I apologize. Hopefully I can get rid of this thing before WrestleMania 31. But uh, he'll be punching his ticket to WrestleMania 31. From there, uh, Daniel Bryan can be inside of this match and uh, no longer be the guy without a match. Um, and we can see the, the direction that Daniel Bryan's going in. I think that Daniel Bryan's going to be added into this match, but at, at the end, uh, the end game out of WrestleMania 31, more than likely he's going to be have to become the number one contender because Brock Lesnar won't be around, and Roman Reigns is going to need a contender for that WWE Championship. It's either going to be him or it's going to be Seth Rollins, but you would think that Seth Rollins is going to be sort of wrapped up into this feud that with Randy Orton. There's no way in the world they're going to be able to blow off that feud in one match at WrestleMania. Mania 31, so we'll have to see and we'll have to continue on with this, but of course there's a lot more to come with Monday Night Raw with Wiz Khalifa hosting, of course you're going to have the big Bray Wyatt uh, promo to come along a little bit later with him and hopefully The Undertaker, maybe Sting will be there, that's the rumors of the day, so we'll see, stick with us on Stevie Breach and we'll see you in a little bit Oh man back here with the continuous coverage of Monday Night Raw March 9th, 2015, what do you know, R-Truth steals the Intercontinental Championship from Wade Barrett with a devious plan, um, basically the match, uh, came out with, uh, Stardust coming down to the ring, he was the sole holder of the Intercontinental Championship, even though he wasn't the champion at this point, he had a match against Dean Ambrose, who had came down and attacked Wade Barrett during the last match, um, basically, Ambrose was able to beat uh, Stardust in, in a match. Nothing really good, nothing really spectacular, but that's when it all broke loose uh, from there, basically, with um, just an all-out brawl with all the competitors of the Intercontinental Championship match coming down. Uh, of course, you know, R-Truth, who was on the commentating team for two matches in a row, uh, he was out there, and he was... Um, uh, basically, he brought a burlap sack with him, and, and they kept on making a point of asking him why he had brought this burlap sack down to the uh, announce table. But basically, he chose the right time to sneak in an attack. Basically, as uh, you know, five of the competitors from the Intercontinental Championship ladder match were inside of the ring. Our truth stayed at the commentating team, watching all of them battle. Um, and uh, basically they went through and uh, Daniel Bryan was the first one to hit the ring and uh, start the attack and then from there just added on and added on and basically everyone hit their finish as uh, you know Stardust started off by grabbing I believe Ambrose and hitting him with the crossroads uh, which was followed by let's see if I can get this all right uh, Ziggler delivering the super kick uh, which led into uh, Luke Harper hitting him with the big clothesline which then turned into um, Daniel Bryan hitting 
uh, Luke Harper with the big high knee, um, taking him out at this point, you know, R-Truth that had sneaked over to the ring, and at that point, he had grabbed the championship, put it inside of the burlap sack, and returned back to the announce team. At this point, uh, Daniel uh, Bryan was attacked by Wade Barrett and laid out. Wade Barrett came over to the commentating team, demanding that he knew that R-Truth had the Intercontinental Championship inside of that burlap sack, and basically bullied R-Truth into giving him the championship so he would be the rightful holder. From there, Wade Barrett started you know, climbing the, the stands, basically, um, to, to leave as he was holding up the burlap sack, showing everyone that he was the winner. And basically, at this point, our truth ran from the commentating team up to the top of the ramp to start to celebrate. Wade Barrett was looking at him like, you idiots! I have the belt right here. And basically at that point, R-Truth showed that he had the uh, the real Intercontinental Championship. Wade Barrett reached inside of his burlap sack to see what he had, had grabbed and ran off with. At that point, he found out that he would uh, had grabbed an Intercontinental Championship foam belt, one of the kids' belts that they sell at WWE Shop or at Toys R Us. And uh, he was fooled how he could have known that he was walking away from the commentating table with a bag that weighed less than three pounds. It was not the real Intercontinental Championship. I We'll never know, but then again, that is television. But as of right now, after seeing all the guys battle inside of the ring, they do this all the time. Whether if it's the last Raw before a Survivor Series, or if it's the lost Raw before a Royal Rumble. Seeing all the guys get in there and basically just start throwing punches and start beating the crap out of each other. I can honestly say right now, I care more about that Intercontinental Championship match more than I did uh, a few minutes ago. I'm not sure how Stardust plays into this. They just needed somebody for him to, um, for, for Dean Ambrose to beat even though he was at a start, you know, the the downfall of finishers. But um, uh, if they add Stardust in there, it's good. I guess he's not going to get the match against Goldust. But then again, maybe they're holding out. Maybe they can do Stardust versus Goldust on the uh, WrestleMania pre-show. Make sure I get into my seat at the uh, Levi's Stadium early for that one. So we'll have to see what's going down. Right now it looks like they're doing some sort of a presentation for Connor. Heard he's going to be getting in a uh, WrestleMania Hall of Fame uh, award. Uh, so we'll have to see where we go from there. Peace out. Wow. <laughs> that was a big one. Brock Lesnar coming out there on the WWE Monday Night Raw. Anytime Lesnar's around, it's always a big deal. Uh, tonight's the March 9th edition of Monday Night Raw. And, um, you know, it's been a good Raw. If, you, if you've been a fan of the Intercontinental title chase, you've been uh, watching the last few segments about that. But Paul Heyman turned this into a main event segment coming out here at the start of the uh, second hour of the show. Uh, basically, Paul came down and they showed a, a good long little vignette about uh, Lesnar going up against Roman Reigns, basically Roman's uh, trip through NXT, through his rise at the Shield, and then winning the Royal Rumble, and then basically painting a picture of the story of Roman Reigns' family life, uh, growing up uh, with his, uh, you know, historic wrestling uh, family, where they link him to all of the past wrestlers of Rikishi and The Rock, uh, and, and that whole big, huge uh, Samoan family of uh, the have all come into wrestling and all had a huge, um, you know, success uh, rate of getting into WWE. Of course, The Rock is one of the biggest, you know, WWE uh, wrestlers of all time who's left WWE and gone on to, to be one of the biggest, you know, Hollywood stars. But basically, they talked about, you know, the, the criminal uh, linkage uh, that goes along with that family, basically telling Roman to go down to the beach and fight all the muscle heads or go into the bar and fight all the drunks. And if you don't, uh, be the last one standing from that fight, you're not coming home tonight. And basically, Roman is being pitched to go up against the, the biggest wrestling star going today, and that is Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31. And, you know, Paul Heyman is telling him, you're not going to come home from this fight. You know, from the past promos, you know, Paul has come out there and said, I would pick Roman Reigns to go out there and fight anybody on any night at WrestleMania 31. I would put my money on him but not against Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman is claiming that Brock Lesnar is his beast that he's going to be bringing to WrestleMania, and there's no way that anyone's going to be able to beat his beast. And then they just go on to the point of Paul Heyman just being Paul Heyman and just spitting this promo out to basically, you know, referring to all of the dirt sheet storylines that have been going on for the last week, or I, I apologize, the last two weeks since uh, Brock Lesnar walked out of Monday Night Raw in Nashville and didn't appear on the show, basically talking about Brock Lesnar taking his WWE Championship once his 
contract ends to UFC and, and, and unifying the championship with WWE slash UFC World Heavyweight Champion uh, about going in there. Of course, everybody knows about the rumored match uh, you know, Brock Lesnar against Frank Mir. As soon as Brock Lesnar will be able to get out of wrestling at WrestleMania 31 with his contract ends, be able to get into fighting shape, that is the match more than likely they will put him up against. Of course, Frank Mir and Brock Lesnar have the history. That was uh, Brock Lesnar's first opponent and one of his first championship uh, opponents uh, were basically Brock lost the last one after dominating the fight, but basically once they got it onto the ground, I believe it was an, uh, some sort of an arm lock uh, that that basically you know Brock got locked into and he immediately tapped out because you know his game was was good in UFC. It was good enough to be a part of UFC, but you know he hadn't really mastered the, the art of the fight yet. But uh, you know then once they had the fight uh, in the rematch, you know that's of course where Brock dominated and showed that he had grown as a fighter and become better. But you know the the, the it's all about WrestleMania 31. I don't think anybody has this as uh, Brock going. Uh, and um, I, I don't even know what they would do if Brock was to keep the championship at, at WrestleMania 31. I think it definitely would be a shocking deal. Um, you know, would WWE would have to do what they did with CM Punk? They'd have to do what they did in the past and immediately start some sort of a tournament in order to crown a new champion to move on from there. It, you know, it, it'd be a dream situation of, you know, what do we do now that, that Brock has left? And maybe they let Brock go fight one fight and then hope that he loses where you can bring him back. And maybe if he comes back to WWE, then he can, you could re-sign him and then just use him as a normal superstar once again, where he would, you know, hopefully bring the championship back and put somebody over. But then again, if Brock Lesnar loses his UFC fight, why would he want to come back and fight another one? But, you know, there's a million things that they could do, but I think everybody knows that Roman Reigns is going to be taking the championship. Paul's promo here was dynamite, bringing up the fact that, you know, uh, as a rookie in 2002, basically they put Brock into the ring against the big start they've ever had uh the rock who um you know the brock you know just was fed him and he beat him you know at wrestlemania 30 brock was fed the undertaker took him into the ring and beat him something that no one's ever been able to do at wrestlemania before and um that's what he's going to do again because Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar. He's a beast and he can beat anybody. Honestly, in my opinion, Roman Reigns looked like a major geek in this segment by not coming out and not confronting Brock Lesnar. Um, the guy's calling you out, basically to your face. So we all know you're in the back. You have the main event match against the Authority. The two-on-one, which will probably end up becoming a five or six-on-one against um, Roman, I apologize, Roman Reigns going up against Seth Rollins and Randy Orton as a team, two-on-one. Um, you know, you we know you're there. Get your butt down to the ring. Get in the face of Brock Lesnar and show us that you're really going to take this fight to him. Because as of right now, you look like a wuss, dude. You look like you don't even want to be in this match. You look like you're happy to win the Royal Rumble. And you'll take your little, you know, Royal Rumble trophy to the back and say, that's it. I'll put this on my Wikipedia page. But you look like there's no way in the world you're going to be beating Brock Lesnar. If you're going to beat Brock Lesnar, you need to be getting in his face and you need to tell him. And stop all him from talking all this crap about you. Hey, what up everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you with the live continuous coverage of tonight's Monday Night Raw from March 9th, 2015. We're counting down the time until WrestleMania 31. I've told you that one of the biggest things that I'm hyped up for when it comes to WrestleMania 31 is Sting versus Triple H. I made a video the other day talking about what I thought was going to happen with a uh, surprise appearance from Sting. The talk of the town was that Sting would be at the Monday Night Raw tonight, basically making Pittsburgh a uh, night of action for Monday Night Raw. You know, Brock Lesnar, Sting, uh, Roman Reigns, maybe some physical casualty between these two big matches that are be going down between their competitors. But uh, instead, they book a big thing for Sting. They draw this up. Sting speaks live Monday Night Raw. That wasn't Sting. That might have been Sting's words if Sting wrote a letter on WWE.com or Sting did, I don't even know, wrote some sort of, uh, you know, a memoir about his time, uh, you know, away. But basically, they explained a little bit of the things that I was looking for them to explain. Why he chose to come back at the Survivor Series and attack Seth Rollins, uh, making sure that um, you know uh, Dolph Ziggler would get the pin and the authority would be gone. Basically talking about the abuse of power that Triple H had been using in WWE for a while. Talking about the closure of WCW. And 
<coughs> maybe filled in a little bit of the gaps of, of why these two are fighting at WrestleMania 31, except for just to make sure Sting has one match in WWE and make a good little bit of money uh, with his Legends deal and, and make another DVD with a documentary on there with the full story of Sting. But <coughs> I have more questions and I have answers right now. Was that Sting? Was that even Sting's words? He didn't really put Triple H into his place saying anything that we didn't already know. I kept waiting for some sort of a foil. You know, we um, haven't seen Triple H on Raw. We saw Stephanie come out and break Kane and Big Show basically saying that he wanted or she wanted the monsters to be able to come back um, and not be the, the wusses that Randy Orton pointed them out to be just bitching and complaining all the time. Um, I kept waiting for that segment to, to be some sort of a, uh, just some sort of a, a spoof or something like that, and it wasn't <coughs> anything. I don't know who that was uh, that did that sting voice, but it was horrible if it was trying to be a sting voice. Um, honestly, a bump in the road on the road to WrestleMania 31. I still care about this match. But uh, I care about this match a lot less than I cared about it a little bit ago. Rusev's coming down to the ring right now. I guess it's going to be Rusev going up against uh, Curtis Axel and Axel Mania. This is a match that I really care about. So we're going to cut this video. I'm sure I'll be making more videos about Sting versus Triple H at WrestleMania 31 in the near future. So we'll see what goes on from there. All right, everybody, Stevie Breach back with you on the March 9th edition of uh, 2015 Monday Night Raw. We got one of the big ones, finally named to the main event of uh, WrestleMania 31, John Cena versus Rusev. We all knew that this match was going to be taking place. We saw them fight at Fastlane. Of course, Rusev was able to beat John Cena due to John Cena tapping out after the uh, super kick to his nuts and then super kicking to him to his head, knocking him out and leaving him unconscious, uh, strapping in the accolade. Of course, from there... Uh, John Cena asked for a rematch in order to go up against Rusev, try in the end defeated streak, and be, bring the United States Championship back to good old US of A. Well, Rusev didn't like that plan and, and he did not accept the rematch. John has, has asked Rusev for a match twice. John approached him in the back tonight, basically delivering a big, huge promo where he said um, that you know he was. Uh, spitting in the face of America and that, you know, he was standing up for the fight, the good fight, and, you know, John wanted to have this. The big match for tonight, of course, it was a lot of a joke, but it was Rusev going up against Curtis Axel and Axel Mania for the United States Championship. Axel came down there. I bet the farm on this one. I really thought that Axel was going to bring the United States Championship home due to outside interference by John Cena. I thought that's how they were going to trick uh, Rusev into accepting the match by basically being so mad that he lost his under defeated streak, lost his United States Championship, that he would fight John Cena uh, you know, at WrestleMania 31, and since this is a high-profile match, it would sort of pay back the, uh, the undefeated streak that he would have lost during this match. But that is not uh, what they decided to go with. Instead, uh, basically, Rusev beat Curtis Axel in very fast fashion, reminding himself that he is Curtis Axel and that he is Rusev. And uh, once the match was over, uh, basically... Uh, Rusev grabbed the mic and started spitting the heel words, basically saying that, uh, you know, he was better than everybody else, you know, Mother Russia, blah, 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 all the stuff that we normally hear. From there, John Cena came running down and attacking, got in a little bit of fisticuffs with Rusev, knocking him down, strapping him into the STFU, and not letting go of the hold until Lana accepted the match for WrestleMania 31, making our co-main event, John Cena versus Rusev, United States Championship match, who would have known? I don't know if it's official yet with Daniel Bryan being added to the Intercontinental Championship ladder match. But Daniel Bryan, last year's uh, big winner at WrestleMania in the Intercontinental Championship uh, ladder match. You also have John Cena going after the United States title. while Roman Reigns, the NXT star of the future, going after the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Brock Lesnar. This is going to be a big one. This is the where it's going down. WrestleMania 31. We're all fired up. This is going to be a good one. John Cena versus Rusev. Yeah, let's get this done.
We have finally gotten Undertaker's answer to the challenge for WrestleMania 31 that was set out by none other than Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt has been poking the beast ever since about Royal Rumble time, all throughout the time, the, you know, you know, the fast lane and everything else. Bray Wyatt has been pushing to get the match against Undertaker at WrestleMania 31. And tonight, on the March 9th edition of 2015 WWE Raw, we got an answer. Bray Wyatt came down to the ring and he called him safe, uh, self the face of fear uh, and basically he was pushing on The Undertaker why he hasn't been there tonight. He said he was going to raise the dead himself, basically trying to find what was going to take to get Undertaker to come back from the dead after losing last year at WrestleMania to Brock Lesnar. What was it going to take for Bray Wyatt to get his big you know, pile of bones into the ring. That way Bray Wyatt can surpass Undertaker, becoming the new face of fear in the WWE is what he wants to be. He wants to take over that legacy of the Undertaker. That's why he wants to get Undertaker in the ring at WrestleMania 31. And tonight, Bray Wyatt picked up Undertaker's urn off of a table in the middle of the ring and basically said that it was empty, that Undertaker was dead, and that it would be no more. Moments later, the... <coughs> the urn started smoking, uh, much like the genie's lamp in Aladdin, and smoke started to emerge from there, and from there, Undertaker emerged uh, via, you know, video, you know, you can say via satellite using the WrestleMania 27 rock joke, uh, basically with Undertaker accepting the challenge of Bray Wyatt, saying that he would face him at WrestleMania 31, which then got Bray Wyatt to the point where he was laughing at the uh, Undertaker accepting his challenge, uh, basically from there to you know, put fear into Bray Wyatt, Undertaker sent lightning bolts from the ceiling, much like 1996 Monday Night Raw, uh, the Undertaker effects of the lightning hitting the middle of the ring, starting the fire on um, Bray Wyatt's rocking chair, the same rocking chair that Seth Rollins broke, uh, you know, before their their big match, I believe at TLC, which sent Bray Wyatt you know, into almost a puddle of tears like a crybaby crying this got undertaker uh bray wyatt to laugh at his challenge why at one point this rocking chair meant the world to bray wyatt now means nothing but we are finally getting to see undertaker versus bray wyatt at wrestlemania 31 i can honestly tell you that this match doesn't fire me up this month but the one thing i can tell you about undertaker and wrestlemania and wwe is never take anything for granted last year honestly i thought that undertaker versus brock lesnar was just another undertaker match undertaker got to the point where he was 21 and 0 and now here he is going after his 22nd opponent you know one, two, three. Brock Lesnar got the pin and he got the win and it was over. And the streak was done. And <clears throat> I can tell you, the match wasn't that good, but I wasn't paying that much attention. And if I can do anything in the world, I wish I could be paying more attention to that F5 there in the Superdome at WrestleMania 30. Because it was on and cracking from there. Good God. That changed the tone of the night at WrestleMania 30 so much. Everybody knew that Daniel Bryan was going to be walking out with the title. Even after Daniel Bryan won the main event, the walk home from WrestleMania 30, everyone was drained. Everyone couldn't believe what they saw. People were still reacting to Undertaker's loss against Brock Lesnar. Basically to the point of the walk home was a death march. I swear to you guys, you had to be there to believe it. Go back and check out the WrestleMania 30, click 30 videos. Walk home, barely anybody said anything. We just walked back to the room, and I think right after we got back to the room, we went on the WWE Network and we rewatched the match because we still couldn't believe what we saw. But Bray Wyatt versus Undertaker, WrestleMania 31. We're going to see who the new face at Fear in the WWE is going to be. All right, main event time. Fun, fun stuff. Let me just say that, honestly, I had a lot of fun watching Monday Night Raw. I don't get to watch it um, to start to finish all that much live on Monday nights. Um, being able to watch it live with you guys and live tweet and everything like that is always a fun experience. So I had a ton of fun tonight. Hopefully from here on out, I'll be doing a lot more of the day shifts on Mondays. And uh, I'll be able to share the experience of WrestleMania. Because uh, I honestly can tell you that after tonight watching Raw live and not coming home an hour after it's over. And everybody already knowing what happened. And uh, the people that I'm talking to trying to dance around spoilers. 
um, or being, you know, not being able to go to certain places on the internet and things like that. Um, <coughs> I can honestly say that I'm more excited about WrestleMania 31 than I was. But basically, the main event tonight was two on one: uh, Randy Orton and Seth Rollins teaming up, going up against. Um, Roman Reigns in the main event. Of course, Roman Reigns, honestly, in my opinion, uh, looked like a big, huge geek tonight, not coming out and confronting Brock Lesnar after him and Heyman ran him down into the ground, and basically he just didn't do anything, just sort of just took it and just, you know, say things about my family, say things about me, say I'm not going to be able to beat you. Here I am, live, in the building, and I'm not going to do anything about it. You looked like a super mega geek to me. Honestly, in my opinion, I thought that this was going to be more than what it was. I was thinking maybe that Brock Lesnar would get involved. Everybody knows about the, you know, the big, huge drama to get him to Monday Night Raw tonight after the last two weeks. Um, <coughs> with Brock walking out on Monday Night Raw, as well as Brock showing up at UFC. But uh, he was nowhere to be seen during this main event. Basically, it was Rollins uh, and Orton going into this match 2-on-1 against Reigns. Orton on the outside took out Mercury, um, which basically left Noble to take him to the back. Earlier in the night, um, Kane and Big Show were sent home by Stephanie McMahon, so there was no one left uh, to try and help Seth Rollins. Is basically Orton picked apart uh, the uh, authority, just like he said he was going to. No Triple H in sight tonight. I don't know if he was still... Uh, in Ohio dealing with all of the NXT stuff that was going on there or maybe they just decided to keep him off of the show because of the fact that um, they ran the Sting promo uh, tonight. But uh, it, was, it was fun, fun stuff. Basically, Orton early on in the night told us all that he was going to pick apart the authority just the way he did tonight. And in the main event, basically, as Rollins uh, went for a tag from Orton, Orton delivered the big fuck you double uh, you know, flip off right to his face, stepped away from the arena, or stepped away from the ring, leaving uh, Rollins to be beat by Reigns. Right after the 1-2-3, Reigns slipped out of the ring and he was gone. And from there, basically, Randy Orton picked apart Seth Rollins, beat him up and down all around the ring, throughout the uh, the fans basically making a big huge circle almost around the whole arena before returning back all the way over the, the guardrail down to the floor where the ringside is. And at that point, Randy got a peek of the announce table. The announce table that took him out with the curb stomp from Seth Rollins back before the Survivor Series. A long six months of waiting for this long, huge return. Of course, everybody can remember all of the Randy Orton Returns videos where I kept on saying this was the perfect time for Randy re to return. If Randy was going to join Team Cena, or Randy was going to debut at the Royal Rumble, or Randy would come back on that Monday Night Raw after the Rumble. Uh, getting us into this whole big, you know, you know Randy giving the, uh, the RKO at Fastlane. Things like that. I was really pumped. Uh, I really cared about Randy more than I did any other time in his career, I can honestly say. Randy Orton is probably one of my least favorite wrestlers. But tonight, it was on. And when they climbed up on top of that um, announce table, I just squealed with joy. I almost thought it wasn't going to happen. But we got the mother loads of RKOs with Randy Orton hitting the RKO, <coughs> which will set up their WrestleMania 31 match. Uh, come uh, WrestleMania, and I'm pumped. It's going to be a damn good match. Randy Orton versus Kane, WrestleMania 28, uh, was well above my expectations, as well as Randy Orton uh, going up against um, CM Punk at WrestleMania 27. Uh, the 30 match, was, was it was what it was, because Daniel Bryan was in there. Of course, I was going to love it. And WrestleMania 29 against the, uh, the Shield, didn't give me any lasting memories. I kept on hoping that Orton would turn. I remember that and ended up being Big Show. The guy who promised he wouldn't turn, turned on the team anyways. But uh, I'm pumped. I'm fired up. Thank you, everybody, for sticking along. Monday Night Raw tonight it was an awesome show. I'm glad everybody was here. And we checked it out. Now we got two Monday Night Raws. I don't know where next week's is, but the week after that's going to be in L.A. And then you know what that means. It's WrestleMania time. We're jumping in the cabs. We're flying down the freeway. We'll be in Santa Clara. We'll be RKOing each other right there in the hotel rooms. It's going to be a good time. Peace out, everybody.